This is a quick tutorial on stabilizing your bone or fossil with butt bar B76 resin. Just to clarify, I am an amateur collector with a low budget. So first off, you need to be in a well ventilated area. I just do it outside to be safe. The area also must be room temperature. Even when it was just barely chilly, I've had bad results. So make sure that you are working in a warmer area. So you'll need a glass container, acetone, and the B76 resin beads, which can be purchased online. I use a glass bowl because it's easy to clean up, but I believe you can also use plastic bowls depending on the type of plastic. Next, you'll need something to scoop out the plastic beads. I just use a simple plastic cup. You'll also need a chip brush, tongues, a mixing spoon, and Q-tips. You'll also need some safety glasses, a respirator, and rubber gloves. Vinyl or latex work fine as long as you don't submerge your hand in acetone to grab the fossil. And last but not least, you will need a bone or fossil to stabilize. So what does it mean to stabilize a bone or fossil? Well, as you can see, this bone is sun bleached, cracked, and flaking. The pieces will chip off with minimal effort, so we want to fix that by using the resin to create a bond inside the structure of the bone that will prevent it from falling apart. So step one is to pour your acetone into the container, then you're going to pour just a little bit of resin inside of that. Not a lot because a little goes a long way and you want it thin enough where it will penetrate the entirety of the bone and not just the outside. The final consistency should not be thick or runny at all, it should actually be more like water. Um, after mixing you can see it's starting to dissolve but it does take a few minutes to fully dissolve. The beads should be fully dissolved and there should be no milky white clumps when you place your fossil in the container. So just keep mixing until the acetone has sort of a gasoline like look to it. Ideally you want to fully submerge your fossil into the acetone, but I don't have the space or the budget for that much acetone or that size of a container. So for this demonstration, I just use a chip brush to layer the acetone on. It works fine for larger fossils. As you can see, I'm adding lots of layers to make sure the acetone penetrates the bone. If you do just one little layer, it probably won't offer much protection in the long run. If you did add too much resin to your acetone, at this point you'll notice clumps of it on the bone and the bone will end up sticking to the surface that you leave it on to dry. So make sure you do a test piece before doing any pieces that you actually care about. And here I'll show you a submersion method with this old cow or bison tooth. So you just drop it in there and keep turning it and lifting it, submerging it on all sides. If you have enough acetone where it's fully submerged, just let it sit in there until the bubbles stop rising from the bone. Then remove it and let it dry, and that's all you need to do. So these are the two pieces drying. It may take anywhere from an hour to a couple of days to fully dry, depending on the size of the piece. What happens is the acetone evaporates, but the resin remains inside the bone, leaving a strong bond that holds the piece together. And the final step is to check your piece for what I call acetone burns. I don't know how this happens, but my theory is the acetone either dries too quickly or too slowly in these spots. Maybe somebody in the comments can enlighten me on why this happens. Uh, to fix this, I use a Q-tip to apply acetone to those white edges, and we simply rub them out. I found it works better when the Q-tip isn't sopping wet. That's why I rub some of the acetone out before applying it. Finally, here are all the bones I've stabilized using B76 resin. It can be pricey, but for the amount you receive, it will last you a very long time. Well, that's all. I hope this tutorial helped, and be sure to like, subscribe, or comment. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.